Thank you very much. Um, so um, let me just say that it's a, a great honor for me to speak at this conference. And like uh, everything, pretty much everything in, the, in geometry and physics in the last 20 years, this talk will be greatly influenced by work of Maxim and Jan. Um, so this is about connection between uh, Donaldson-Thomas invariance um, and character varieties. So to be more precise, it's about especially the uh, motivic Donaldson-Thomas theory developed by motivic Donaldson-Thomas theory developed, as I said, by Maxim and, and Jan. And a, connection, uh, a conjecture formulated by Housel, Letelier, and Rodriguez Viegas on the uh, cohomology of character varieties of smooth projective curves with marked points. So, um, for, now, for the first, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, set up the stage and review this conjecture and, and try to write down the formula they propose, which is a, a truly beautiful and remarkable formula. So, okay, so, right, so let's, 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 uh, let's, let's um, set the stage. So C is a smooth projective, smooth projective curve over complex numbers. Uh, I'm gonna, the genus is gonna be G. Um, we're gonna have two marked points on C. P n infinity, um, P of course distinct marked points. Um, this is not a serious restriction. This is mostly for presentation purposes. I don't want to get tangled in too much notation. And gamma P and gamma infinity are the corresponding generators of the fundamental group of the punctured curve. Um, and then we need to specify some more uh, da data. So we're gonna have to fix a diagonal matrix. It's, it's all complex numbers, so I'm not gonna keep writing complex numbers. Um, a diagonal matrix, an invertible diagonal matrix. Uh, mu is gonna be a partition of R. This is the partition that determined by multiplicities of eigenvalues. eigenvalues of, of lambda. So you determine a partition of, of R. And now finally an integer E co-prime with R. So E is just some integer co-prime with R. Okay, so what is the character variety then? The character variety is going to be, roughly speaking, the moduli space of, of um, conjugacy classes of representations of this fundamental group into GLR. Okay, so we set C E lambda to be, as I said, the modulized space of Holmes from the fundamental group of the punctured curve into GLR, uh, send, sending gamma P to the conjugacy class of lambda, um, and sending gamma infinity to, to a central element, to pi, square root of negative one E over R. And all this is modular conjugation. So this is one, one, a major um, object of study. The topology of this, of this character varieties is very, very interesting. Now we have a theorem here. So in order to uh, make the notation short, I'm gonna refer to the work of Hauser, Letelier, and Rodriguez Viegas as HLRV, um, saying that um, for sufficiently generic for sufficiently generic lambda, C E lambda is smooth, is a smooth quasi-projective variety. Um, of course, over complex numbers. And furthermore, a, a consequence, or, or empty, possibly empty, but if not empty, it's smooth and quasi-projective. And if you compute its dimension, 
um, if you compute this dimension, you find out it's some formula, but it depends only on the partition mu. So it has some, some formula I'm not going to write down, but it's only dependent on the partition mu. All right. So now what are we going to study in this context? It's the, uh, some kind of weighted Poincare polynomial of this variety. So what I want to study, I mean, what I should say HLRV studied was they looked at, um, since this variety is non-compact, it has a non-trivial weight filtration and cohomology um, due to Dulin. So, and they studied the, so we have the cohomology of, of this variety C has a weight filtration, W, and uh, you can define I mean, I'm sorry, the compactly supported cohomology I want, it still has a wave filtration. So we can define a, some kind of weighted Poincare polynomial. Um, by the following formula, P compact of this, it, it's, a, it's a, um, a function of two variables, formal variables U and T, it's the sum over the dimensions of the graded pieces of the wave filtration on HK compact, weighted by this monomial, which looks a little bit funny because it looks like I need to take a square root of u. But then furthermore, but in fact, this turns out to be a polynomial. So there are further results, again, of HLRV saying that this is in fact a polynomial of, of so this PC it's a polynomial uh, of U and T. So only even, even I occurs in that formula. And furthermore, it depends, again, depends only on mu. So um, on the partition mu. So a lot of data that I specified before doesn't actually enter in the, I mean, there's no dependence on the uh, specific values of the eigenvalues, for example. So we can call it, so we can denote it we can just write p, p, sorry, p of mu u t uh, without, without uh, any ambiguity. Um, OK, so now finally, let me get to the point of writing this conjecture they formulated. So the question was to determine all these polynomials for all possible values of the rank um, and all partitions mu. And they wrote a, a, a beautiful formula, which I want to write down here and leave it, leave it on the blackboard for the rest of the talk. So this is. The HLRV conjecture. Um, so it's written in a very, which is in a way that's really very, very suggestive to a physicist. It's written like saying that the partition function of some system is the exponential, exponential of a free energy. Well, I'm using these names. They certainly did not use, um, you did not use this terminology, but for a physicist, it's very natural. So first of all, let me write this here. So what appears in the exponential. It's a platistic sum, so it's a sum over all partitions. It's a sum over k greater or equal to 1, 1 over k. And then we have what we have here. And let me write the sum in here, w to the minus k d mu. Um, z and w are going to be some formal variables, purely formal variables. So the k divided by 1 minus z to the k, w to the 2k minus 1, m mu of x to the k. OK, z, w, and x are formal variables. x is actually an infinite set of formal variables. Um, the m mu's are the monomial symmetric functions. So this is what appears in the exponential. Which is it is a dependence on genus. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. There is dependence of genus in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's because I, I, just, I, I just forgot the P. I apologize. I need to, sorry. You, I need to have a genus, and it's in, the polynomial will depend on the genus, certainly. <laughs> I apologize. This was just a, an empty formula, what I wrote there. OK, so um, yeah, so it depends on G. Well, it's, OK, so yes, yeah, it depends on G. Um, OK, good. So this is one side of the formula. Um, and then what is the other side? The other side, it's a, the way, hmm? 
it's the monomial symmetric functions associated. M mu is the monomial symmetric function for the partition mu. And x is just some infinite set of variables. So you just imagine x is just x1, x2, dot, dot, dot. So it's all formal variables here. Um, all right, so, so th this is, this is um, one side. The other side, quite remarkably, the other side is just a pure combinatorial object. It's a sum again of partitions, but other partitions, I mean, they, well, the same partitions, but that, you, you know, they have a different nature. Um, so there is a rational function I'm going to write in a minute. Uh, associated to any partition, and then it's weighted by some mod by modified McDonald polynomials. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain all this all this all these quantities here. First of all, this is easy to write. It's some rational function, which is the product over all boxes in the lambda of z minus two a plus one, which a is the arm length of a box minus w to the two l plus one. To the 2g, l is the uh, leg, leg length of a box uh, divided by z to the 2a plus 2 minus w to the 2l, z to the 2a minus w to the 2l plus 1. So indeed, this is, as you see, it's explicitly dependent on g. So let me just write this in words before I explain what these functions are. So h lambda twiddle is, they are called the modified. McDonald polynomials. Now, I know very little symmetric function theory, so I couldn't give you a, a definition of, of that function over there. Fortunately, I don't have to give you a definition in, in, uh, in symmetric function theory. What I, need, what I am going to do is give you a geometric construction for these functions, which is due to Heyman. Okay? So um, for our purposes, it's much more illuminating to think of them to, to employ the geometric construction for this modified McDonald's, uh, which, was, uh, which is a result of Heyman. Um, so, and it involves the Hilbert scheme of points in C2. Okay. Is it to complement finitely many points or many points? Uh, there is a precise condition that I'm not, I'm not remembering, but there is a spe very specific condition here. I think it might be complement of high dimensional subspaces, not just points. Explicitly given. Yes, it's explicitly given in the paper. OK, so now let's discuss a little bit the, McDon the modified McDonald functions, because this is going to be important for, um, for what I have to say next. All right, so now this is, as I said, according to Heyman. So we're going to look at the following diagram. This is the uh, symmetric product S of C2. This is the, um, it's just the Cartesian product, and this is an n factorial to one cover. Now here we have the Hilbert scheme, Hn of C2, and this is the uh, Hilbert child morphism, collapsing uh, whichever cycle is there. And now we complete the square, and we get what's called the isospectral Hilbert scheme. So this is the isospectral Hilbert scheme. Which is again, it's generically an n factorial to one cover, but but something pretty pretty bad happens over, over, uh, basically over the uh, well non-trivial fibers of this morphism here, and in general this is this is as the scheme is not even reduced, but um, what Heyman proved so there is a, a structure theorem. What he proved is that this H twiddle and C two reduced if we take we reduce scheme structure. It's irreducible and Cohen Macaulay. And that, that was very important because what he had to, he did next was to take a, a push forward of the structure shift here, down here. And if you endow this with the reduced scheme structure, what you get down there, it's a, it's a nice vector bundle, which is known under the name of Procesi bundle. 
And that plays, that's really the main geometric ingredient in the construction of the, the uh, McDonald polynomials. All right, so now let's. So let's let uh, P, P is the push forward of O, H, and Twiddle reduced. Okay, so now this turns out to be a rank n factorial vector bundle on Hn. And not only that, but it carries a fiber-wise um, a fiber-wise action of the permutation group of n letters. So there is an it's an, uh, an action of, of Sn by naturally by, by construction there. All right, so now the other thing we need is there is another natural action of a torus on the Hilbert scheme of points, which comes from the, just the scaling action on C2, the diagonal scaling action on C2. And it's very well known that if we classify fixed points here, what we get is a bunch of monomial ideal labels uh, labeled again by partitions of n. All right, so now to get this, this McDonald polynomial, what we need to do is look at the fiber of p over a fixed log of a fixed point there, and look at it. And there is a simultaneous action of S n and and an action of t, and they commute again naturally by construction. So and and what we get, what we learn then, is that if we restrict p to a fixed fixed point, this decomposes into a sum of characters. Obviously, it decomposes over a sum over partitions. Let me write this like this. I'm going to explain the notation. These are the irreducible representations of, of the symmetric group. And these are just representations of, of t. So it has a decomposition like this, which is, again, okay, it's all natural. All right, so now finally, what is the McDonald polynomial in this context? Let me write, this is a theorem. Let me, maybe I can write it here again due to, Heim, to Heyman. We have the following. I mean, this is a hard theorem, so this is highly non-trivial identity. Although, you know, me being a physicist, I'm going to take it basically as a definition for McDonald polynomials in my case. Um, so it's given by this following formula. Q1 and Q2 are the natural the generators for the character lattice of this guy, of, the, of this torus. Algebraic torus, this is the character, and these are the sure functions. So as I said, this is a hard result. So it, it took it took a, a, a complicated, it has a complicated and hard proof. But this is for us the most natural definition for this. I mean, it's not a definition, but for the purpose of this talk, it's going to be a definition. All right, so it's, it's very intriguing that in the, they appear, these functions appear in this, this particular formula. And it's, I should say that the way they arrived at this formula was by counting. So what they did was to formulate the problem over finite fields, it's because the character variety is defined over, over uh, finite fields. And they counted rational points. And what they did is that eventually, using then the veil conjectures, they arrived at this formula. And they even proved a specialization of this formula, which I'm um, Think of sets z equals double inverse or something. So that is proven. That's a that's a that's a theorem. Well, just a second. If you can't to a point of you can count only weight, but cannot distinguish the Grun cohomology. That, exactly what that's what they proved. The special a specialization of this formula. Specialization. Yeah, specialization where z equals double inverse. I think that's exactly what happens. You turn off the cohomological degree. Exactly. Yeah, and that's proven. But then based on some symmetries and some, they conjectured this. Um, all right, so now, as I said, me being a physicist, what I, what I'm, when I saw this formula, it looks very, very intriguing and very elegant. So I was thinking, how can I get this out of string theory? What, is there any way of deriving such, well, you know, not proving it, but deriving it or explaining it from string theory? And especially, how can I explain the occurrence of these guys, of the McDonald polynomials? And how McDonald polynomials fit in their proof? But in their proof, they, they, what they get is a, is a, um, it's a specialization of this, of, of this McDonald polynomials. Because you see, that's what I'm saying. They collapse to something much simpler. 
So only when you when you write the full conjecture, then you get you get this two parameter family of, of functions. Um, all right. So okay. So so the way this goes is by first employing another piece of mathematics, which relates character varieties to the modelized space of Higgs bundles, and in this particular case, it's going to be Higgs bundles, parabolic Higgs bundles on the curve. Another piece of beautiful mathematics, which, which goes back to work of Hitchin, Donaldson, Simpson, um, which tells, tells us that there is a, a, a deep relation between character varieties and, and the modelized space of Higgs bundles. And in this particular case, we get a special flavor. I mean, we get a, a, a flavor of Higgs bundle, which, is a, which has parabolic structure. Um, so I want to say a few words about to bring the Higgs bundles in the picture. And the P equals W conjecture. This is a conjecture formulated by um, uh, Cataldo, Migdorini, and, oh, sorry, Housel. have to, Housel and Migdorini. But it, um, it really relies on previous work, as I said, of Hitchin, Donaldson, and Simpson, which tells, tells us basically that as um, a real manifold, this character variety we, we had we defined, it's actually canonically identified to a modelized space, modelized space of Higgs bundle, of stable Higgs And in this particular case, parabolic Higgs bundles. on C. So I'm going to call it H, let's call it H-E lambda of C from Higgs. Um, hopefully, it's not going to be too much confusion between this and this H and that H. Maybe I should call it Higgs to make sure that Higgs. Um, what is E standing for? E is the degree. I haven't told you, I haven't told you the map between character variety data, data and, and Higgs bundle. But E is going to be just the degree of the bundle. Um, so I, 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 as I suspect, you know, most people in the audience know a lot more about this than I do. Uh, just to fix notation, um, what I'm talking about here is pairs E phi, where E is a vector bundle on C, and phi is a, is a OK, so, so I'm talking about pairs E phi, where E is a vector bundle on C. Phi is an endomorphism with values in a twist of Kc by the point P. Um, I'm just looking at a single point for, for simplicity. Um, and what we need to know is that we have to specify, we specify a, a flag of type mu at P. Uh, sorry, in the fiber, in the fiber EP. And then we also have, um, we have some parabolic weights. Well, OK, to, I'm, I'm being a little bit sloppy here, but I, I just don't want to get bogged down in details. What we need to, what I am going to do here basically is take a special, I'm going to take the la lambda to be something like a diagonal of pure phases, e to the 2 pi i square root of, my, sorry, square root of minus 1 alpha 1 and so on. And, and, um, and the parabolic weights are going to be just this, these numbers that appear there. So it's, it's, it, this qualifies as sufficiently generic according to the definition. I mean, I can make this sufficiently, I can make this sufficiently generic. And from Lux, you should also order somehow in terms of partition area. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being really sloppy here. Yeah, you, you, what you have to do is take the first multiplicity of the first guy, and that's the dimension of the first quotient, and so on. Yeah. Yes, so I, I'm, I'm being sloppy. I, I, I'm, I could go through the details, but um, yeah, I should say the type ordered mu. 
with the natural order given by the uh, order of eigenvalues, and then maybe that will make it. And then there is a notion of slope, a slope uh, parabolic slope, and, and the notion of slope stability. Um, it's all standard, and um, you get, you have slope stability for these guys, uh, and you get, um, and you get a smooth modulized space, which is this Higgs modulized space. Uh, e lambda c. So this is uh, again, it's a smooth quasi-projective, quasi-projective variety, and as I said, uh, it's as a real manifold. It's identical to the character variety, but the complex structures, the com uh, algebraic variety, uh, variety structures are, are very different, and that leads to this highly non-trivial conjecture formulated by by uh, Cataldo, Hausel, and Migliorini concerning what is the interpretation of the weight filtration on the Higgs side. Okay, so that's the issue. And again, without getting into too much detail, because this is really an embarrassing moment. I mean, most of the audience knows a lot more about perverse shifts than I do. Um, what they do is to define a perverse filtration on the cohomology of the modulized space of Higgs bundles using the uh, decomposition theorem for the Hitchin map. Um, so, so the story is that there is a Hitchin map to, an, to basically a vector space, which is obtained by taking the polynomial invariant of the, of the, of the Higgs field. So this maps to, by map H to some vector space, which I'm not going to try to write in detail. Um, and this is the map which associates the phi trace of phi to the k, a vector of polynomial invariance for one smaller than k smaller than r. Um, so, so, and sorry, to e phi, but, but yeah, you just take the, the polynomial invariance of phi to the k. And this, in this complex structure, this is a holomorphic, it's an algebraic map. And using the decomposition theorem for this, we obtain a perverse, so-called perverse sheaf filtration on the cohomology of the Higgs modulized space of Higgs bundles. And this is going to be called P, all right? And the conjecture, the conjecture uh, is that uh, basically PI, if you set up your conventions correctly, which is a fairly subtle issue here, so set up your conventions, PI equals W2I for all I. Um, as I said, this was formulated by Cataldo, Hauser, and Miglorini, and they proved it for rank two with no parabolic structure. So that's even there, it was a hard proof. Um, so it's proven for, for rank two um, with no, no parabolic structure. Okay, so, so these are the ingredients. So this is all a, a math story. So now what I'm trying, what I want to do in the remaining, I don't know, most 15, 20 minutes maybe, is how this all ties together and, and, and all the pieces click together in the context of motivic Donaldson Thomas theory. So what is the plan here? Well, we want to have. Do they show that this conjecture implies the formula? The conjecture certainly implies the formula. Uh, no, 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 I apologize. No, the conjecture doesn't imply the formula. The conjecture basically gives you another conjecture for where the dimensions of the graded W graded pieces are replaced by the dimensions of the P graded pieces. No, the, the conjecture doesn't imply the formula because you know, this, this, this side of the formula came from, as I said, by counting points and then extrapolating from the point count. And on the Higgs side, it's, it was checked for rank three by direct localization on the Higgs side, by just fixed point theorem on the Higgs side. It was checked. Um, what was checked? What, what was checked was the prediction obtained from there for the Poincare polynomial. That can be checked. But for higher rank, it's getting, it's getting really hard. So, so let me just, so what's the plan? We want to obtain some kind of derivation of the formula, of the formula from from, well, if you are a physicist from string theory, if you are, if you are a mathematician from Donaldson Thomas, or I should say motivic Donaldson Thomas theory. So, motivic DT theory. So, um, I should say that from the outset, from the uh, outset, this is not going to be a proof, but basically what I'm going to manage to do is reduce that formula to, to some, so, so to speak, standard conjectures in DT theory. So, you'll, I'll, I don't know how much time I have to explain, but that's going to be, so it's going to follow from some standard fairly standard conjectures in, 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 uh, in DT theory, but it's not, uh, it gives you a framework for a proof, so basically it tells you when, when those are proven, then this is proven too. But, <laughs> okay, 
So, um, all right, so now what, what's the first step? Well, it's just we're talking about motivic Donaldson Thomas theory, so what we need is to find a Calabi oscillator for lurking around here. Uh, so far, I've been on a curve, so I, 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 everything was done on a curve. So where is the Calabi, where is the Calabi L threefold in this picture? So the first step would be construction. So what I want to do first, step one, we need to construct construct a Calabi L threefold um, x, for example, uh, such that such that um, this moduli space of Higgs bundles is going to be isomorphic to a moduli space of Bridgeland stable, stable pure dimension one sheaves, pure dimension one sheaves on X. Now, this looks kind of a loose statement because, I mean, how can you can Calabi, there are lots of Calabi, lots of Calabi L3 faults. But fortunately, there is here we can rely on some, some, uh, some results obtained in the literature um, by, so this was uh, born uh, Greshenig, um, which basically tell us, gives us a machinery of identifying parabolic bundles parabolic bundles bundles on C are identified with just ordinary vector bundles on a root stack. Which I'm going to call C twiddle. So basically what's happening informally, I, of course we can immediately write down some rigorous formulas. You take this point P here. And you excise it, and you, what you glue in is a, in, in a, in a, uh, it's a, it's a stack basically, which looks locally like C mod mu L. You, you insert in a stacky point where L is just the length of the partition mu. How many parts you have in mu? Um, so you insert a, an orbifold point, and what you get is a, um, it's a, it's a smooth, smooth orbifold. It's a smooth de Riemann for stack, which furthermore projects naturally to C by some map rho, and this is going to be a coarse moduli space. I mean, C is a coarse moduli space for C twiddle. So, and, then, and then there is some work I, have, I don't have time to review in detail, which allows me to reformulate um, the moduli problem for parabolic Higgs bundles uh, uh, on C as a moduli problem for just ordinary Higgs bundles on the root stack. And from there, the next step is to come up with a Calabi L threefold. So c coming up with a Calabi L threefold, it's fairly easy at this point. It's kind of disappointingly easy. Um, what you have to do is to take a fairly naive construction, um, which is to set, we set, uh, all right, I'm doing okay. All right, we set x is the total space of O C twiddle plus k c twiddle, which is, of course, I lied a little bit. This is not a Calabi L3, it's not a smooth Calabi L3 fold. It's just a, it's a smooth orbifold. This is going to be a Calabi L orbifold. Dimension three. And, um, and, and that's, that's the setup. And then you can easily prove that, well, what you can prove, it's not quite that. What you can prove is that if you cross with A1, then the moduli space of Higgs bundles it's isomorphic to da 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 to the moduli space, so moduli space of dimension one sheets. Uh, but this is pretty harmless. I mean, this, this is pretty harmless there. All right, now, what's this? Well, we have a, a, a geometric setup. So we lifted the problem from a curve to a Calabi of threefold. Um, so this is what physicists say, uh, well, it just increased dimensions. Uh, okay, so now what's the, the second step? Now, for physicists, I should say, once you get to this point, this moduli space of pure dimension one shifts and so on, these are just the, the two to zero bound states in, the, on this orbit, in this orbit for background. Okay, so we kind of managed to reformulate Higgs bundles to identify them with supersymmetric D2 to zero bound states. Now, the second step is to employ, now we're looking at the motivic DT theory of, of X. Um, as I said, of Kontsevich and Soibelman, and 
more specifically, we're going to look at specific objects in the derived category of X, which are the stable pair considered by, uh, considered by Pandare, Pandy, and Thomas. So, um, so from Pandare, Pandy, and Thomas, we know there is a counting theory for accounting uh, theory for, let me write upwards, for stable pairs, which means our pairs O, X to F, where this guy is pure dimension one, sheaf, and S is generically surjective. I'm not going to, I don't have time to get into too much detail. The construction of Pandar, Pandy, and Thomas produces a moduli space with symmetric virtual obstruction theory, so um, with symmetric, sorry, symmetric virtual cycle, and and then you can get numerical invariance. But then using the machinery of Konsevich and Soibelman, we can actually get motivic invariance. We can get uh, motivic invariance for such objects. Um, so, and then from motivic invariance, I'm going to just specialize the polynomial invariance by taking the so-called uh, 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 ser, ser polynomial. Um, so, so um, this is. As I said, I'm summarizing a lot of mathematics in, in a few words, but uh, at time, I, I, I don't have time for, for saying more. Uh, I still want to erase this one, sorry. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, so, so, from Konsevich and Soibelman, what we get is we get motivic stable pair invariance invariance and um, and then you specialize the polynomial by taking the correct polynomial specialization which is compatible with motivic decompositions so we get polynomial invariance and finally we're getting some we can get a partition function which I can call Z PT uh, I should say that the polynomial invariants are called refined in physics. We also saw, saw this refined BPS states occurred in, in Sergei's talk. Yeah, they are very much related. It's just the background is different. So we get some, some, some partition function like this. Um, and and uh, yeah, so we get some, some, some generating function for, for such for, for polynomial invariants. And um, okay, so now the main conjecture we formulate then the main conjecture states the following, that this side equals this side of the um, HLRV formula up to uh, a simple, a monomial change of variables. So it's not quite coming in W and Z. I have to take some combinations, but really easy combinations, like Z squared and Z over W or something like that. Uh, nothing complicated. So this is the main conjecture. This is one of the conjectures we um, Oh, man, I forgot. I should say this is all work with Wien Chuang, uh, Ron Donaghy, and Tony Pantev. So this is pretty much, uh, yeah, this is work done together with Wien, Ron, and Tony. And one of the main conjectures um, uh, we formulated is this one. It's to identify this side of, the, of this identity as a, as a refined PT um, partition function. All right, now, um, what, does, what will this buy you? Well, if you combine this with the other identification of the modulized space of Higgs bundles, what you realize then, um, by staring at that formula, is that, in fact, the whole the whole HLRV formula. Um, so what this buys you is that uh, uh, so what we get, what we get from here is that if we, we get a, 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 a diagram of identities like this, this is the exponential of HLRV. And then we have a change of variables here, and the change of variables here, the same change of variables, which identifies this side with a refined um, 
Donaldson Thomas partition function here, uh, or PT partition function. And this one, it's identified with a refined Gopal Kumar Vatva expansion. So this is refined Gopal Kumar Vatva expansion. Um, which appeared in, in many places in physics. So this appeared in, well, and somehow it's implicit in the original work of Gopal Kumar and Vafa, Katz claim Vafa. Then it was written explicitly for Tori Kalabi out threefolds in Iqbal Kos Kazim Vafa, and more recently considered by uh, uh, um, Katz Clem. Um, and, and sorry, I, I forgot the full reference. So anyway, so it's considered it's considered uh, it's considered many places in physics. In this particular case, it's slightly exotic because we conject we use this expansion for a non-toric work before. But um, anyway, the, the message here is that this reduces to, and this is one of the standard um, conjectures in Donaldson-Thomas theory. I should say that this is a, for mathematicians, this is a refinement of the uh, strong rationality conjecture. Conjecture. Of, of Panda Panda and Thomas, so okay, so it has a well, it's a, it has a well, it has a good, it has a, its own place in, in Donaldson Thomas theory, but uh, to my knowledge, it's not proven at least in, in the refined form. Okay, so this is what what you get from here, and then um, perhaps I, I finish in five minutes. The, the last thing I want to say is that what are what's the evidence for this conjecture we formulated? So there is two types. I mean, I, in, there are two two things that physicists can do when to, to get evidence for conjectures like this. One of them is direct computations. And we were successful in doing some direct computations to check this for rational curves with a single marked point. Um, so that, that was done by, by, by localization using, well, using further conjecture, further an, an, a K theoretic index of Nekrasov and Okunkov. Um, so that's one thing. So we can get evidence by direct computations. But we can do something perhaps more conceptual, at least from the physical point of view, which is try to use string theory dualities. So we can train this particular case, M type 2A duality. And this is a sequence of dualities, which is now in the physics lit literature, geometric engineering. Um, um, it's geometric engineering. So and, and the. There is a long history in physics, which I, I don't have time to get into. But the math there is a mathematical formulation of this sequence of dualities, which occurred in a recent paper of Nekrasov and Okunkov. Um, I think, to my understanding, is still conjectural. Part of the paper is still conjectural. But there is a mathematical framework proposed by, by Nikita and Andre concerning about this duality, for this duality. So how it goes is as follows. I'm just going to sketch it in a few minutes. I'm not going to give you the punchline. And the, the good news for us is that, although perhaps it's not completely rigorously constructed, it does explain the occurrence of McDonald polynomials. So it goes like this. Okay, So this is, as I said, using recent work of Nekrasov and Okunkov. So I'm going to state it in this particular case. Okay, their work is more general, but I, I only need it in this particular case, which now we take a five-fold. That's going to look like this, OC twiddle plus OC twiddle plus OC twiddle plus KC twiddle over the curves over the uh, root stack C twiddle. And now this is a fivefold. And then what they do is they conjecture the existence of a counting problem for membrane quantum states in M theory, which is a counting problem formulated on the fivefold. So there's, there is going to be some counting so-called M2 counting problem, which is, a hard, which is in, full, in full rigorosity is going to be a very hard theory, I believe. But um, let's accept that that exists, that so there is some counting problem. And what now they do, what we can do using this, we notice that there is two torus actions here. There is a C star 1 and C star 2, both of them anti-diagonal. 
Okay, so there is two torus actions, and what you can do when you have torus actions like this, you start with this complicated counting problem on a fivefold, and using localization, you can reduce it to, to, three, to a threefold problem. And if you use localization, localization um, for the first torus, what you get is the, the uh, DT slash PT theory of, actually the PT theory of, theory of, of our X. It's a, it's a long story, but I'm, I'm being schematic here. And now if we do localization for the second torus, well, what we get is something like PT theory on for a non-colobial threefold, which is just C twiddle cross C2. Okay, so you get a, a PT, it's all equivariant, it's, it's a long story. So a PT theory for, for this non-colobial threefold. And now if you analyze this theory to employing some physics tricks along the way, from here with a lot of work, uh, you can actually you can show that the partition function you get here, um, you get from this theory here, it's basically, uh, it's basically again given by, by, the, uh, by, the, uh, by this side of the formula up to change of variables. And the way this is done is by it goes, this, this arrow here goes, goes exactly through to Heyman's, uh, Heyman's uh, construction for McDonald polynomials. So from here you get very naturally McDonald polynomials using Heyman's results. But I really don't have any time to go into detail here. It's, it's a fairly long computation. And it's quite remarkable that at the end of the day, you know, going through this fivefold theory that's kind of mysterious, everything you know, um, gets, all parts click together, and we get, um, I think, a convincing evidence for this conjecture. And I think it's, it's a good time to stop. And thank you very much. And uh, okay, so I want to wish Maxim Hark happy birthday. And which second <laughs> equation, where is the character variety? It's the last part of your talk. It's only about Higgs bundles. Yeah, so it got, it got replaced by Higgs bundles. And the W filtration got replaced by the perverse filtration. P double I. You are assuming P double I. I'm, assu I'm assuming. I'm sorry. I should have stressed it. Yeah, I'm assuming P double. Are you using that actually? Uh, how you use well, uh, when I well, it's yeah. Well, you see, the uh, there is yeah, there is further. Okay, <laughs> yes, there is. It's part of this refined uh, 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 Gopal Kumar um, uh, expansion because there is even in 2000 when when the Gopal Kumar Vafa appeared. There was work by Hosono, um, uh, Saito, and, and Takahashi um, saying that the BPS, the GV BPS invariants uh, should be identified with the, the dimensions of the graded pieces in the perverse, perverse filtration um, on the cohomology of Higgs. Well, um, so this is a natural interpretation in this, la in this side. It's a natural interpretation for GV invariants. Of course, um, their claim is true basically for smooth spaces. But under the circumstances, this is a smooth space. I mean, the, Higgs bond the moduli space is a stable Higgs bundle. It's smooth. So in this case, we can actually employ their definition and, 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 and think of this as a mathematical definition for BPS invariants. Um, it's very much in agreement to the intuitive picture of Gopal Kumar and Vafa. Because if you think how you compute the graded pieces here, you have this left shift action by the vertical um, polarization. And, and that's really what it's in, 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 very in, in, in sync with physics. Yeah, but when you use Nikras or Tokumko, they have equivalent polarization. How you compare it to the... Um, no, that's a, that's a, <laughs> a further step. Now, at the end of the paper, they also talk about refined invariants. You have to upgrade. <laughs> yes, I, I, I gloss over a lot of a lot of stuff. It's I agree, but yes, it, it, it's kind of you have to, you have to. Um, in particular, they have this definition of of inv defined invariance as a K-theoretic index. So it's not defined. It's they're identified with some K-theoretic index. I think you, yeah. Okay, more questions. <coughs> <laughs> All right, so that works. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you.